Now, you mentioned Len Bias and being at Maryland earlier. Do you have a favorite uh, Len Bias story uh, you like to share? Like From everything I've heard, he was supposed to be the next Michael Jordan. Yeah. The highlights look crazy. Uh, I mean, can you vouch for that? Absolutely. You know, uh, I was on the staff when we recruited Len, and Len went to Northwestern High School, which was, shoot, maybe, I want to say 500 yards from the university. Um, I don't think it was a no-brainer that we were going to get him, but uh, he, he committed to us early, uh, came in as a freshman. Um, and, you know, you, you, you watched him in high school, and you said, yeah, this young man has a chance. And, and then, you know, I don't think I've ever witnessed a player's explosion so quickly. Like, he came in as a, as a freshman, and during preseason, you know, he was good. He was talented, you know, could, you know had that explosion, that jumping ability. And that really nice hierarchy jump shot. And he was such a sponge. Like, he wanted to get better. You can tell he was passionate about the game. So he was always in the gym. And, and as I would drive in and park right outside of Cole Field House there, there was a tunnel that you walked through. And almost every day I came in in the morning, there would be Lenny Bias in there. He'd find a manager or someone to, to retrieve the balls for him, and he's working on his game. Um, and he made a rapid growth, a big jump just from the, from high school to his freshman year. Um, and then obviously you saw the progression from freshman year to his sophomore year and then his junior year. I coached him for three years. I left um, after his junior year and went out to join my former college coach, Lou Campanelli, at, when he took the job at Cal Berkeley, University of California, mm. in fact, back 10 and at that time. Um, but a phenomenal young man, great young man, a terrific family, terrific family. Um, and you know, it's just, so, it saddens me. Like I got that call when he passed, I, I'll never forget. I was lying in bed with my wife out in California, Alameda, California. And I got an early call, um, that morning he passed and, and a friend said, Lenny's dead. And I said, what are you talking about? And, and you know, obviously uh, I was filled with emotion. Um, every time I talk about him, if I see the highlights of 30 for 30 that comes on ESPN, um, I can't help but cry because I just it's such a tragedy. And I knew his mother, Lonise, and, and father. They were just terrific people, always at every game, coming into practices and things of that nature. Um, but um, he was a joy to coach, obviously. And, uh, you know, you know, everybody talks about how do you coach him, what did you do to make him better? Like a lot of it was just he just had self discipline to do what needed to be done. And um, he was a hardworking young man, a very coachable young man. Um, and as I talked about Luca, like, like you get guys like that, they have that mindset, like a Kobe Bryant, uh, you know, LeBron James. You just see it in them. You just, um, they're passionate about getting better. They're, they're a sponge about everything. They listen. Um, and, and that's the way Lenny Bias was. And, you know, that was the time when I was, I was still playing a little bit when, uh, when I coached at Maryland, I thought I could still play a little bit. And, <laughs> and, I, and I remember, you know, part of my thing, sometimes lefty would say, Sherman, you got to get out and play. So I would, I would play with the guys, scrimmage with the guys, some guys in practice. And he was so strong and physical. Like, um, he, he could just terrorize everybody in practice. And, <laughs> uh, but the, but just a loving kid, funny kid off the court, um, just unbelievably just a great character type kid. Um, and again, it's a, it's a sad story. Um, and not a day goes by that I don't think about Lenny mm. and think about the times being there with him. And, um, you know, I have an opportunity to see some of the former players like Tony Massenburg that, that played with him, or Keith Gatlin, Jeff Baxter, and obviously being in the big 10, here at Iowa, when we travel to play Maryland, who's in the Big Ten, I see a lot of those former players that all come back at times. And you know, in fact, uh, Tony Massenburg wrote a book, and uh, it's a great book. And the last the last game we played there this past season, he handed me the book, an autographed copy of the book that he had autographed, and I read that in like one sitting. It's a terrific book, of, uh, and he said it's titled "Lessons from Lenny." And it talks about how Tony Massenburg, who also became a great player in his own right and played 15 years in the NBA, but he modeled this game and, and lived his life because of Lenny Bias. And so that's, that's just, those guys are really well connected, really close, those Turpin guys. Sounds like a good book. Yeah, absolutely. Might have to check that out. <laughs>